All right. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the January Pearlbutt and West PTO meeting. We are thrilled to have one of our SROs, Officer Kim, with us today um, to talk about internet safety and social media. And then we'll have some principal reports and our executive board reports and lots of important information coming up. So um, please stick with us. And after um, Officer Kim speaks, we might have a few minutes to answer a few questions that you might have for him. Um, so without further ado, I present Officer Kim. Hi, uh, do you hear feedback on my mic? Just a little bit. It's not, it's not bad. There's a setting I have to change on this, otherwise it gets all crazy. But hold on. Let's see. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You should be able to just share. Um, okay. So I understand. Um, I mean, the internet basically creates a ton of work for a lot of us. It's still a lot of unknowns. So. Um, I'll try to answer as many questions that you might have. I have a presentation. This is what I'm actually gonna do with all the sixth graders and seventh graders and eighth graders. And uh, hold on, let me share the screen. Okay. All right, do you see the screen here? Okay, yeah. so... um. So um, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because it's supposed to cover like an hour or so. I don't know how much time I have, but um, first thing, benefits to the internet. We all know that creates, you know, even this meeting. Um, the internet usage. So the amount of data that we are creating, especially the newer generation, younger generation, is pretty, it's, it's astonishing how much data they create. Um, I remember when, you know, we had floppy disks, we had, you know, we would use Napster and download songs and it was like a big deal, right? Now they're literally could do send a video anywhere across the world. It's so easy for them to do, especially if they, if they have a cell phone. And it's not just cell phones now. It's um, it's Chromebooks. It's uh, desktops. They don't really use as much anymore unless they're really into gaming. But um, it's the, the the tablets, everything. So if you look at like the amount of total, this is probably a little outdated now. But if you look at the users accessing the um, accessing the internet using the phone, it's ninety two point one percent. So basically everyone is using the phone to access the internet. And this was in April, uh, 2021. Uh, same thing, average time spent using the internet on mobile devices, that's actually extremely low because I've actually had my 13 year old on days off, I'll check his screen time. And he's always like, why do you always set screen time on? So said, I take a look and I was disgusted. It was, uh, I think it was eight hours on TikTok. And I'm like, how did you spend eight hours? Like. Working eight hours, most working people that do eight hours do not even work eight hours, but he literally sat there for a cumulative eight hours of watching TikTok. And that's not counting Instagram, um, YouTube Reels, um, all these short, like addictive uh, apps that are coming out. So yes, and I'm guilty of it too, because when I look at my phone or every week, it tells me on Sundays, your average use is like five hours or something a day. And we're all guilty of it it's really hard to disconnect from it just because it's designed to be very addictive. So for these kids, studies have shown that mobile devices are as addictive as cocaine, um, you know, figure like comparatively, but you could really see it because when they take the phone device, when we take phone devices away or when school ends, the amount of kids that just stare at their phone as they're walking out of the school is ridiculous. Um, I don't know when kids start getting their phone now. I always tell parents the longer they wait, the better it is. But I know it's unrealistic because it's, you know, how do you stay connected? Um, here it is. Here's the amount of information they create every day. Uh, this is every minute of the day. So if you look at things like, let's see, I don't know if TikTok's on this one, but YouTube videos, 3.67 million videos being watched in a minute. This is probably the low of the numbers. Uh, look at the videos watched on TikTok, 1.67 million for every minute. So the amount of power that these um, social media programs have uh, is ridiculous. Most people, we all shop on Amazon, you know, very simple, very easy. 
And that's a whole slew of another problem, but we won't get into that. So um, I always ask kids, do you, would you like to pay $100 a month to have a tracking device implanted into your body? They're like, are you crazy? I would never want that. And I'm like, but if you have a phone, you're voluntarily doing it. You're doing it. Um, you're actually paying to use it. And you're, unless you change a lot of these settings, they are following you. If you have an iPhone, which most of us probably do, because it's one of the more popular devices in the US, the, if you look at, there's a whole slew of settings. If you go to like the location settings and the privacy settings, you could see frequent, uh, I think it's called frequent locations. You'll see everywhere you go on a daily day-to-day -day basis and it'll keep track of where you go, how long it took you to get there, how long you stayed there. It'll usually show your home, your, your work, place of work, uh, maybe your school because you're dropping your kids off or whatever. And this is the information that is all being kept on their devices or our phones and being sold to marketers and advertisers. And then of course that leads to other malicious actors watching your data or stealing your data. There's tons of data breaches. Um, we have, you know, ransomware, you know, uh, financial theft. We just had someone lose thousands of dollars on, you know, their account being hacked via fish, uh, phishing email. Um, that's stuff we talk about just because kids don't realize the, the dangers of sharing um, their passcode and all their other safe, like, uh, personal identifying information. So we try to drill that into them. Um, catfishing, right? You could act like anyone else, especially these video games that the kids play nowadays. Uh, you'll see whether it's an Oculus, um, Xbox, PlayStation, it's all connected. Every game that you play now, no matter how simple the game could be like Minecraft. It, I remember when Minecraft was a simple game, you play it on your phone or your iPad or your um, PlayStation. Microsoft bought that uh, game. Now everything, they have servers where you could, you know, battle, you could talk to other kids or other players, you could sell things. There's a whole black market. It's not black market, but there's, they're selling and buying these objects using cash and converting it into a, a fake currency so that they could buy things. And I'm sure you hear that all the time. Mom, dad, can I, can I buy the, can I spend $5 on this game? I just need more gems. Where are these gems? Um, so I could buy, buy this skin. You're like, what does that skin mean? Oh, it makes me cool. It's I could flex to my friends and you're like, do you realize you're wasting money on a useless thing because you feel like it's going to make you look cool or whatever. It's like the sneakers that are $500, which I don't get. And, uh, but this is what their economy is based on now. Um, it's our society has told us that, well, we've shown companies that we're willing to do micro, uh, micro, transactions you know whether it's you know buying something on a game it used to be that you bought a game it was yours there was nothing else to add to it now the game is free and if you want to get rid of ads you want to uh you don't want to wait 10 minutes for this building to be built so what happens you spend money so be mindful of that if you have your iphone make sure that the uh parent the uh, settings are on so that they have to ask you for purchases um, I've had issues with kids spending upwards of $2,000 on their parents' credit card without them knowing because they, didn't, they just kept purchasing items in games. I believe Apple went through a lawsuit with that, so they made it a little more difficult to purchase these in-app purchases. Now it is more difficult to get that money back to buy gems, which are worth nothing. Okay. Um, I will bring up misinformation just because nowadays every. Most people, not most people, but kids believe a lot of things on the internet. They're like, oh, it's on this internet website. It looks nice. Must be real. Um, obviously, we all know that it isn't. These past few years, it's been really difficult to even, as adults, determine what's real or what's not. And I try to teach them that you have to verify your sources. You have primary sources. You have um, trusted adults that you could ask questions on. But you cannot just blindly believe anything on the internet. You see these TikTok challenges where, you know, this one was pretty crazy. Uh, a couple of months ago, they'd say, oh, this celebrity died. And they would start these like fake TikTok, you know, posts. And it's kind of like, it's kind of crazy and twisted how these things are popular. But we had things like that. We've had, um, what's the devious licks when kids would go into their schools, destroy their bathroom or steal items from the bathroom. 
and for what? Just to get clout on social media. But they don't realize that they're actually filming the crime they're committing, which is evidence against them. So um, that's a whole nother battle. Um, we've had, thank God this one didn't get big, but there was one that said, you know, touch the SRO's gun as a challenge. Like, come on, like that's just unbelievable stuff that people are doing. And when the kids during lockdown, that was like their, their way of knowing what was social norm because I've, I've seen the behavior change. I've seen what they think is like cool or funny. And they learned a lot from the internet when they were supposed to be learning from each other and from parents and teachers because we're all locked in a house. Uh, we're slowly digging out of that, thank God, but um, it's always something that I always talk about. Cameras are everywhere. Whether you're babysitting, whether you are you know, in public, anywhere you have, um, where anyone can film you in a public legal spot, you do not have a right to privacy. The only places with right to privacy are, you know, uh, bathrooms, locker rooms, you know, changing rooms, things like that. But kids and well, everyone needs to know that cameras are everywhere. And like this little, um, this USB plug, there has been uh, cases where people will put that into bathrooms and film you know, people in their private moments, they have smoke detectors with this little pinhole camera. Um, these are obviously everywhere, these ring cameras, they link, um, if you're part of the neighborhood program, anytime a crime happens, everyone's notified in that area. If you wanna see a busy area, go to a city, and you could log into like Bridgeport and see all the car break-ins, you know, um, whether there's a suspicious individual, there's a lot of stuff, but, I've noticed the other day when I was walking my dog with my wife and thinking that we could talk openly. And I looked around, even these little residential roads and every house basically had a ring doorbell camera. And if you don't have one, but they're very sensitive. Um, they notify if there's movement, they notify if there's audio. And I realized no matter how safe I feel or like how private I feel walking in that public area, someone could always be listening. And it's a sad truth that we kind of have no privacy in public anymore. And I, I, I don't try to make it like down, but they just have to be aware of this because we also have cancel culture where things, if you say it the wrong place, if someone takes it the wrong way, next thing you know, you're being, you know, your reputation is destroyed. Uh, drones, they fly like miles up in the air and their cameras are amazing. It's really scary, but it's, it is, the technology is unbelievable. Uh, school buses, we all know them. They have voice and audio. Like in school areas, they don't really have audio because of the, uh, the whole eavesdropping law, but in school buses, they do have audio and video. Uh, group chats, I'm sure you see a lot of this. If you have your iPad, you might have 150 numbers or you have some sort of like FaceTime coming up and you see these numbers and you're like, these people calling you or you're texting to these people? They might not even be in their contacts because they don't realize it, but um, I explained to him, you cannot sh openly share things like this in these texts or group chats, because as soon as you send it or you send an inappropriate picture or a meme, someone screenshots it and sees it coming from your number, that's your reputation right there. Um, I know these group chats are huge because I actually, um, a little hint for parents is that I, I use my information or the iMessage account so that when something comes in or a FaceTime call comes in, I'm actually that number that they don't know who it is. And I know when they're being called and I know what they're sending. And I hate to be like that, but it's like being in public. We have to keep an eye on them. Yeah, photo videos are forever. We all know that. Um, everything we do, this is being recorded. You know, it's um, anything that you say can be taken out of context. So it's, it's very, um, it's a sensitive thing. Um, freedom of speech, this country, great thing we have, First Amendment right, freedom of speech. At the same time, there's a fine line between freedom of speech and criminal violation or uh, facing civil liabilities. If you're slandering or liable, uh, accused of liable from writing something, but we have to, I try to explain to a lot of parents, they're like, why doesn't this, um, why doesn't the school do this? Or why doesn't the police department act on this? People don't realize that we have a duty to protect people's freedom of speech. Even if it's mean or hurtful, if it's not threatening or you know like a direct imminent threat or another criminal violation, we actually have to protect that speech because that is their civil right. 
Um, schools, on the other hand, they have the ability to do, you know, cyberbullying, um, mean speech, hateful speech. Those things that the school have the um, ability and certain like bullying things the duty to do. That's why we work together to try to resolve these issues and try to educate um, kids and people that are involved with these kind of situations. Uh, like I said, cancel culture. We saw that with everyone. Oh, sextortion. I try to push this with the high schoolers. This is when a girl comes and, and uh, messages you on social media, whether it's Snapchat, um, Facebook, and say, and they'll have a, a really, uh, it's usually a female attacking, targeting a, a male. And it'll, it'll be like a beautiful girl. They'll say, send me pictures. I want you, you're really handsome. I want to get to know you. Next thing you know, they get a new photo of that person. And what do they do? They send a message saying, I have a new photo of you. If you don't send me this much in cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, I'm going to release this to the public. And as police, we always tell you, do not, you know, you can't negotiate with these people because once you sent it, that's it. Um, this is the, uh, there was a suicide that happened with a juvenile because of this extortion. Tragic. And if you look at the map, the U.S. is one of the highest targets of this type of fraud. Um, it's usually the wealthier countries that they will target. Um, this is the whole thing with sexting, sending, you know, nude photos to friends, girlfriends, whatever. Once that photo's out, that's it. You're not getting it back. And it's terrible. We we deal with this all the time. We try to delete these photos, but once it's out there, it's out there. Um, this happens to adults too. So um, the we used to actually get ransom notes saying that, you know, we've seen you um, cheating on your wife. If you don't say that, send this information or this money to um, this uh, online bank account, we're going to tell your wife that you're cheating. And it's obviously all fake. Uh, we get reports of that. But these are the little scams that um, people in other countries, it's usually somewhere in like a, a poorer country that have nothing to lose, or they don't have a good relationship with the US. So they're not afraid of getting caught. Uh, phishing emails, I'm, I'm sure you see them all the time. Uh, random email saying you gotta log in. Do not ever click on an email with a link that says please log in. And because no bank will say, click on this link to give us your credentials. Never. If, it, if you're unsure, log in through your regular web email or the web address, and then go in through there and make sure that lock is on top of the screen. Social media safety, if your kids, I mean, at this, uh, the WISP might have it, the Snapchat, turn off the location sharing, go through all their security settings. TikTok actually has a parent-child relationship uh, setup now that you could see what the kids are watching. Um, sometimes there's some shocking videos that do come through on TikTok, even if the filter doesn't get it. Um, sometimes there are deaths. So it is very traumatic for kids to see. Um, school shootings, we've had like kids inside the uh, classrooms, kind of live streaming or whatever. And those are very traumatic for kids. And that's why these social media things are so difficult because you cannot control it. Even if you report it, it's already too late. Someone has already seen it. Uh, I've seen some videos and I'm like, whoa, what, what happened? Where'd this come from? By the time you see it, it's already too late. The kid saw it or someone saw it. Um, Snapchat, the location information is very accurate. Be mindful of it. Make sure you turn it off because everyone that's your friend, they're gonna say, oh, I wanna get clout. I want a lot of followers. I wanna be popular on Snapchat. But all those people that you might friend just because you wanna be have a lot of numbers, they might not even know them. They know to, the, um, to your house address where you are. So go through that, turn that off. Be Real is another app, it hasn't, it's a little popular, but basically it says, all your friend group says, be real. It's, you got to take a picture within the next minute. Uh, what it does, is it takes a photo of yourself using the selfie camera and what you're seeing. So at that moment, you have to take that picture saying, this is me being real. Obviously, they're all posing and stuff, so you're not really being real. But another app that came out, uh, TikTok came out with something similar. Instagram, Facebook's kind of dying. That's more for, you know, the older generation now. So um, social media, if you have any questions, email me, call me, whatever. I'll give you my information. It's a, it's a never ending battle because if one meet social media thing goes, uh, disappears or is not popular, something else replaces it. Uh, Cyberbullying, yes, it's always, bullying has always been around. The internet has made it tougher because now it's easier for kids to hide behind the internet. Um, if a crime does occur, we can do search warrants and find people at their home. So. I explained to them that every device has a MAC address, which is your license plate on the internet. 
hopefully that stops them from doing it, but there's always issues. And I guess that's also part of uh, growing pains. Sexting, another thing, um, if you're under the age of 18 and you send a nude photo of yourself, what is it? It's child pornography. It's a, it's a felony and you become a registered sex offender. If you receive it, you're committing the crime. If you send it, you're committing the crime. The reason for that law is, is to make sure that it doesn't spread because that's what allows it to give it life and victimize the people. So a lot of emphasis on this, please. Even if they're dating, they love each other at the age of 14 or whatever, when that relationship goes bad, sometimes that photo might be sent as revenge. So same thing, videos, um, it could be, you know, kids. I mean, they had an incident in Ridgefield a bunch of years ago. Uh, kids from Ridgefield went to the Danbury, um, what is it? The, uh, man, I'm getting old, but there's a park there with a castle. The kids vandalize it. They filmed it, posted it on Facebook. And what do you know? They get arrested. How? They created their own evidence. So they need to be aware of that. Digital reputation, huge. If you're in the corporate world or any kind of professional world, I'm sure you are in or you're related to or whatever, everyone checks your digital reputation and make sure that you haven't done anything crazy or outrageous because they don't want to associate with you. Um, there's companies that will fix it, Reputation Defender, all these other companies, but they make thousands of dollars on trying to actually fix the reputation instead of, you know, it's better to just, you know, not create that damage to your reputation. As we all know, kids, impulsive, some adults or so, uh, make your smart choices, sure, parents. Oh, another thing, kids losing uh, scholarships to colleges or, or, or sports team, they're getting dropped because they posted something really uh, idiotic online. This happens very commonly, frequently, and it's very painful to see because we all make mistakes. And we've had incidents where people have posted photos that were taken years ago in middle school. And then someone has that, it pops up on their memories and they're like, oh, look at this. Let's send this to the school and ruin their future. Because there are people that are jealous and hateful. I hate to say it, but it has happened. So same thing. You see this with, you know, had to stop recruiting the student because he was drinking too much underage using marijuana or whatever, and they're posting it. Keep your private life private. That's all I have to say. Uh, colleges, same thing. We emphasize keeping it clean. Here's some videos about like why colleges and also here, this is painful, Harvard. Imagine getting in there and then getting that revoked. People losing their jobs because they talk trash about their employers. Look, we all don't love our jobs, but you cannot publicly destroy your, try to destroy your uh, employer's reputation just because they upset you. No one loves to work. I mean, it's, uh, well, of course I do, but, um, but no, no one loves to work. They, we have good days and bad days, but they need to stop um, venting dirty laundry on the internet. Because they have very powerful search tools and HR, HR is scary. So um, here it is. What does your online image project about? Uh, here, 21% were fired from a job because they couldn't keep their online stuff, you know, appropriate. Health insurance. Oh, man, I can't imagine not having health insurance in this day and age. Or uh, colleges, the, even mortgages now, because when you're even looking for, I don't know if someone's in real estate, but you do background checks to make sure that they're going to pay their um, mortgage on time or they're going to pay their rent. Uh, you don't want someone that, you know, that looks strung out and, you know, they're going to go, oh, yeah, let's rent to this person. They'll, they'll pay their money, you know. And as shallow as it sounds, this is the world we live in. Okay, and then we talk about here, the undercover sting. This is the creepy people out there that try to, um, you know, entice juveniles or minors to meet them. You know, Chris Hansen. They did this in Fairfield. Uh, I think this was like 2015, 16 around there. And they didn't have a bunch of people. And it's crazy that people still come and meet thinking that they're going to meet these juveniles in this house because, you know, juveniles own houses. But that's how people are out there. There are some out there that are very, you know, disturbed. Trusted adults. We're all trusted adults. We talk to them. We want kids to have someone to vent to and not be afraid to talk to because, you know, if they don't have a place to vent, we've noticed they come, sometimes get destructive. And let's say references. I just did that for, uh, you know, the plagiarizing stuff. But yes, uh, big thing. Um, 
we always want a trusted adult. I've noticed that some kids, you ask them, they're like, do you have someone to talk to if you feel like scared or, or there's something concerning you? And the worst thing we want to hear is no, we don't. Because like as adults, we have a hard time asking for help. Can you imagine what it must feel like for an adolescent going through, you know, their hormonal changes, their, their friendship pressures. And so we always try to keep like an open mind, even with my children, I'll ask them. Um, I know marijuana is a huge thing. My, son, my oldest is 13. Marijuana since January 10th has been legalized in the state of Connecticut for anyone over the age of 21. And my son asked me, dad, there's kids in middle school that are vaping. What do you, what do you think about it? I was like, obviously I don't want you to do it, but I'm open about it. I'm not gonna say, don't you do it? Because you know, that's the first thing that we say and it goes right out the other ear. I'll, I'll answer questions and say, um, what, what does it do? What, what, what does it mean? I was like, look, it's changing. I was like, I'll never always, I'll be there for you, but there are going to be times where you're going to be alone and you're going to have to make that decision on your own. Hopefully you make the smart and right decision. But if you're ever in that position and you have to text me or call me and say, look, give me a way out. We make up a little safe word. Like, um, is did, did grandma come home or something like that? So that they have a way to get on the phone and remove themselves so that they don't feel like they're ostracizing their friends. Um, another thing, or I'll say, what do you think about it? I'm like, I can't tell you what I think about it because you know what I think about it. I don't want you to use it. I was like, there's a reason why there's an age limit so that you could make that choice when you're 21. I was like, your brain isn't developed till the mid twenties. And sometimes I wonder if my brain's fully developed. So I tell them, look, it's your choice, but hopefully you ask someone or you talk to me before you make this choice. Because once you make that choice, especially with opiates and painkillers, it's it could be a, a life-changing event. So I try to keep it open. It's awkward at times, it's painful. It makes me like cringe sometimes, but I know that I have to be the one and my wife has to be the one for them. And it's, I'm in the same battle as you. I do not know everything. I, I'm scared of a lot of stuff in this world. I want our kids to be happy and to get old and have kids of their own. I think that's a lot of our goals. So that's like Officer Joe and I are here for. We, we wanna like help everyone just like achieve and keep a safe place for that for your children to be at. So um, we're very open with questions and any kind of emails or calls and, and I love to bother uh, Miss Valber over there <laughs> and Miss Katis. So yeah, just um, any questions, let, let them know, let me know, I'll get back to you or Officer Joe will get back to you. He's actually on medical leave. He didn't ditch us. He's, um, he had surgery, so he'll be back soon. I've been calling him and making fun of him every day. So don't worry, he's okay. But um, does anyone have any questions or? Yeah, um, officer, I have a question. And then if anyone has any questions, can you drop them in the chat? And then we'll make sure that um, we um, can read them to officer Kim. Um, when it comes to the lower grades, we have the yes. hurl butt kids and the and the whisk kids. Um, at WIS specifically, I've seen it on my kids group chat and things like that. And we do our best to track everything and follow everything. But is there a piece of advice for the younger grades? As we move up? I mean, all of this is important for us to know if we even have older kids or just in general for ourselves, what's kind of happening, yes. but what's a piece of advice that we should really take to heart and start um, following as the kids start getting older and doing more. Um, th the one analogy I thought of was the, uh, like you could put a pool, a uh, fence around the pool, but if you don't teach your kids how to swim, they can drown still. They'll climb that fence eventually, but just because it's that forbidden fruit. But it's uh, it's so difficult now because some kids are so much more mature than their peers. Uh, it's the communication aspect. It's the don't be afraid to tell them no. You know, like I, I, they all want phones. They're like, oh, I can't wait to get this phone. But I tell them, I, I'll, I'll be the bad guy and be like, no, <laughs> you don't deserve it. I was like, you, you made this mistake in the past, and unless you prove to me that you can do it, you're not going to get it. Um, I wish they had flip phones because I'd be like, here, for emergencies, you could use this flip phone. But it's now like these devices are, are computers that act as phones. So 
um, once you give them that device, it's it's a free world for them. It's very exciting, but there's also a lot of dark sides to it. Um, big thing, communication, keep an open mind. Don't be afraid to put programs on it to keep track of their stuff. Life360 is great. Uh, I could see where my son is, you know. Um, there's other programs out there, but Life360 is pretty, like, pretty much the standard right now. Uh, if you go online, you could download apps that keep track of your kids' use, but Apple phones, especially with their screen time and their parent-child relationship, they keep changing it. So now, even if you take a photo, if a, your child takes a photo and posts it, Apple will go through all the iCloud information to see if there's any kind of inappropriate pictures to alert you. And um, they are changing every, every time there's an update, some little change does happen. Apple watches, I forgot to mention, there is a student mode, like a school mode now. It looks like a little, uh, hold on. So if your child says, I want an Apple Watch, and then you're like, oh, why do you need an Apple Watch? Hold on, it's, uh, it looks like this little hand raising thing right there. You see that little guy? And if you click on that, it goes into school mode and it lets you know, and they can only look at the clock, they can't get messages, but in an emergency, they could unlock it. But every time they unlock it, it logs onto your account and says, your child exited school mode. Because there's issues with kids cheating, there's issues with uh, text messaging because their phone could be close by. Or if you have the iPhone, the cell service on this watch, it is a phone. And, but um, those are the little things that, you know, it's always something though, because um, even I, there's, I don't know everything. So it's like, I'll, I'll Google, let's see, I think they had another thing. And while you're looking, there was another question yeah. about assemblies. And I know Mrs. Faber, you had mentioned that um, officer came in, officer Muggle, and came in and did a talk with the fifth graders. Is that right? Like a couple months ago? Yes. Yeah, they did. Uh, they did a whole, whole to, we met with them in small groups. All the fifth graders got to meet with the two officers about uh, pretty much the, this, talking about the safety and being good digital citizens and, you know, that whole thing about it's, uh, your digital footprint stays with you forever. So. Awesome. Does anyone have any other questions? Okay, Officer Kim, did you find what you were looking for? Are you good? Yeah, you know, I was just gonna Google my computer's acting a little crazy, but um, the just if you go online, just Google like uh, apps or programs that keep your uh, for tracking uh, kids' phones. And I know Android. I've left that a lot, a lot of that out, but I've noticed that kids do not want Android phones. It's it's weird. You go overseas to Europe; they're more popular than iPhones. But um, here, it's mostly iPhones and. The good thing with iPhones is everything's linked. Um, you could check everything. You could you could kind of put on the downtime. And another thing I do is I put limits on their apps. So my son was like, "What? You don't trust me?" I was like, "No, it's not that I don't trust you. It's not like I'm not going to let you use it." But I set it so like TikTok set at one hour, and if he wants to use more time, he could actually send a request saying, "I would like to use TikTok more." And he goes, "Why do you need to know?" I was like, "It's not that." I was like, "It's a checkpoint. It's a checkpoint to let you know that look." This is how much time you spend, and you should be aware of it because sometimes if you're in the zone, you're not going to notice it. So that's all it is. And after he asked me three times, I'll be like, "Do you really need it?" And he'd be like, "No, Dad." I was like, "Yeah, go outside, go use your legs that that were given to you to use." So um, those are the little things I do, and I realize that giving him that sense of like security or like that freedom and that choice, um, it, it does build trust. Uh, I have a a middle child who's uh, ten now. And then I have my daughter who's seven. So I have a lot more to learn with those two. But I've noticed that my, my oldest is the test subject, which is crazy. But um, I think we just all need to communicate and work together. And another thing is, you know, when someone cuts you off in traffic and you cannot say sorry and people get really mad at each other because of it, I think it's the same thing with cell phones and electronic devices. That common courtesy of saying, I'm sorry, or just even saying like, you know, making a facial gesture, that kind of diffuses the situation. I've noticed a lot of that's gone. So just let's just be kind to each other and just kind of understand that we're, we're all stressed and we're all like scared and we don't know what's going on with the world, but we, we kind of have to just work together as a team and not just jump off the edge and just attack people and just take a deep breath. But I think it's the same thing we have to teach our kids because they learn from us. I'm not perfect by any means, trust me. But um I sometimes have to put myself in the timeout, which is awesome. Wife says, no, you can't have timeouts for adults, but um, 
I don't know. I think sometimes we need them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for everyone's for everyone's benefit. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, hold on. Just, um, uh, Officer Kim, this was so incredibly helpful, and we appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Mom. I gotta go chase the middle schoolers around now. So, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. You could send it out to everyone. It's just Jason Kim at WestonPS.org. And um, any problems, issues, you know, we're here. Our police department is actually very nice and very kind of like kind compared to like other big departments. So, so and our chief is really cool with that stuff. So he'll always let us try to like help people out instead of just you know arresting people or whatever. So. Um, that's why I transferred here from my other department, but um, yeah, we're here all on the same team. So we're here if you need us. Wonderful. Thank you so right. very much. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Have a good day. Um, we hope everyone will stay on. We have lots of great information to share. Um, I'm going to go ahead back and um, share my screen. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, okay. Next up, we have Mrs. Cadis. Hi. Good morning, everybody. So I'll just uh, piggyback on Officer Kim's presentation because <clears throat> we have the opportunity now to uh, build on that. And I, I know Mrs. Falber probably has a few things to say too. So at the very young ages um, at Hurlbut with pre K to two, um, you know, starting in kindergarten when students start using. Uh, technology for very specific educational related um, purposes, we do teach digital citizenship right from the beginning within the context of be safe, be kind, and be responsible, our motto. So students are taught that and they do practice and learn um, basic digital citizenship. You know, passwords are private. What does that mean? Um, and we only have very specific things that they use it for, for very specific times during the week. Uh, they're, you know, obviously not free roaming the internet when they're at school. Uh, at home, I highly encourage you to postpone um, any kind of uh, technology where students have access to the internet unsupervised for as long as possible. Um, you know, it, it, once you go there, it's very hard to go back. You know, students at this level, uh, they really don't need phones at this age, at the early elementary years, the primary years, they're always with an adult, they're always supervised, um, you know, it, it just opens up a world that, you know, I think they're not ready for. They don't have the brain development or the uh, capacity to kind of manage all of that. It's, you know, and even as adults, we know it's a daily struggle sometimes to manage technology. Um, it's, it's a, a, a burden in some ways. And we do see with the middle and high schoolers, you know, it's a, it's just a, a very complex world. Um, students when they're five, six, seven years old just really aren't there yet. Um, and they really don't need it at this level. We're always supervising them. They're always with an adult <clears throat> and our overriding to message to students is you're safe when you're at school. Um, and you're always with an adult and there's an adult to talk to. Um, we are seeing some Apple watches um, in the building. Uh, Mrs. Falber and I have talked about this, you know, a few. Um, for the most part, it hasn't been problematic, but again, it is, uh, you know, a piece of technology that sometimes they're not ready for. You know, the ones that are hooked up to the internet, besides being, you know, a little risky in terms of the cost, you know, you're, those are expensive. And if something happens to them, they lose them. You know, when you're six, seven years old, keeping track of your things is, is a learning process. Um, you know, they really don't need those. Um, you know, we, we've had the rare instance where somebody's texting in class from their phone. Again, they really don't need that. Um, you know, they're always with an adult. If they need something, they can talk to us. And then if, you know, we need to reach out to parents, you know, we do that all the time. So, uh, you know, we do discourage those. Um, I know they're, they're kind of, they're fun and they're, uh, they're fun to use, um, but they can be, you know, a distraction. Also at this level, we do teach telling time uh, on the analog clock. So it's a very important skill and it's something we integrate throughout the day. So we do want students to learn uh, analog time. Of course, obviously they learn digital time easily, but seeing the passage of time on a clock where the hands are going around is a very, is very powerful learning. Um, so that's, uh, you know, elementary, early elementary technology. 
Uh, we are approaching very rapidly our 100th day of school. For those of you who have had children here before, it really is a, an exciting milestone in the early elementary years. We celebrate 100 days of learning. Uh, it does also tie in nicely with our math program and our base 10 math system, where students count every day they're in school right from the first day of school. And every time we get to a 10, uh, you know, day 10 of school, the teachers um, teach into and talk about, um, you know, how you can regroup 10 of those for a bundle or, uh, you know, the number 10 then changes. And then they learn to count all the way up to 100. It is a significant milestone, especially in kindergarten, but really building that deep number sense and conceptual understanding with numbers through 100 is uh, is very significant here. So it's a very exciting day. It's also an opportunity at the a little bit over the midpoint of the year to kind of take stock of all the learning, celebrate all they've done. There is so much academic growth in these early years and also a lot of social, emotional, and behavioral learning for the first time how to be in school together, how to be part of a larger group, how to interact um, with uh, larger groups of students. So beyond your classroom, you get recess together. So it's it's really an exciting time and we're looking forward to that uh, very special day. So I'm gonna pause now so I don't use all the time. Always happy to answer questions. Does anyone have any questions? If you have any questions, just drop them in the chat and we can always um, ask them as we go. All right, Mrs. Falber. Great. Good morning. Thank you so much. Um, I'll, I'll quickly piggyback onto uh, what Laura was saying, and, and then I'll move on to our other fun things that have been happening at WISP. But um, we have um, seen a big increase of these digital watches taking place in our school. And um, they are, A, they're very distracting. I had a, a little group yesterday visit with me, and I just said, even like I get distracted by having an Apple watch. It's just um, but also texting, we did, we just, there, there's any reason for kids to be texting. Um, we had a little bit of an incident one time where when they, a student texted a, one family member and said that they could go do a different direction and that, but our dismissal manager says one thing. So it's, that's just, we want to make sure that when they're here, they're our responsibility and we're keeping them safe, but when they go someplace else and we don't know, then it's sort of scary for us on our end. So we really want to make sure that our kids are not texting ever. Um, they, it, is, it is an electronic device. It should be kept in the backpack if they've got one. It can go on to what they call school mode, I guess, is the, the watches. Um, however, if teachers are finding that they're now coming off of the school mode, it's so easy for them to do that. We will. The teachers are, are saying, take it off and put it in a backpack. Um, and if it's a repeat numerous times, um, they will be taking them and then holding on to them and parents will come and get them. But um, we have seen a big increase in um, since after the holidays. And um, so we ask you please um, to have that conversation with your with your child about not using them in school um, and keeping them in their backpack for after school or um, uh, when uh, like obviously on the weekends whenever they want to use them. Um, we uh, this month uh, we've been really like we've been um, celebrating. Uh, all the classes have been are acknowledging, celebrating uh, Martin Luther King um, Jr. Um, Day. Um, we have an amazing group of fifth grade student council reps. Um, they have been going into the classrooms and reading books to the uh, the third grade and the fourth grade classes about important um, African American. Um, people and then talking about, you know, um, what is your dream um, for you know, building off of Martin Luther King's speech? What is your dream for the future? And having that conversation with our, with our students. So that's been really, really nice. Um, we have uh, our performing arts organizations are starting to perform. Uh, last two weeks ago, we had our fourth and fifth grade chorus concert and our fifth grade orchestra. It was really, really well attended. It was a wonderful concert. The kids did an amazing job. Um, and then tonight, depending on the weather, we'll see how that works. Uh, we should be having our debut concert for our fourth grade orchestra and our fifth grade band. Um, so that's exciting that these kids are, are starting to uh, be able to um, put their newly uh, found talents to, uh, to an audience. Um, Next month, stay tuned, next month is Kindness Month. Um, so we're doing a lot of activities. Um, so parents, I'll be sending out a, a some information where um, a lot of things that will be taking place. Um, 
So just uh, some spirit, some spirit week, some community service projects. So um, we were going to really take advantage of that theme of kindness throughout the whole month of February. Any other questions? Please let me know. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. And a, a parent had mentioned um, the organization Wait Until Eighth, which is you, you sign a petition saying you won't give your kid a phone until eighth grade or something to that effect. So if anyone's interested in that, um, the link is in the chat. You can um, check it out and read about it and um, see if that works for you and your family. Uh, and next up, we have Stephanie from Hurlbutt. Let me get through your slides. Here you go. Hi, good morning, everybody. I am so excited to give you the uh, update from Pearlbot. So just starting off, in case you didn't see it, we had some really fun festive decorations going on around the holidays. And I think everybody who drove up uh, really just kind of felt the cheer that was going on inside the buildings. So this was something that the PTO did that we wanted to make sure everyone saw in case you were not in the carpool loop. Next slide. Also to spread some PTO cheer for the holidays, we did a really amazing dessert buffet for the teachers and the staff, which they all loved. And we also tried to give some gifts to some of our hardworking admins. So here's um, Mrs. Cadis with her Hurlbutt hoodie. And there's Mr. Fisher with his bee beanie. And it's been really fun to see Mr. Fisher in the carpool loop and to see um, you know, Mrs. Cadis on Spirit Days and everybody sporting all the fun Hurlbutt swag that the PTO put out this year. Next slide. We also had over the month of December, a really successful community service drive. So we had um, a big fundraiser that everybody participated in where you could bring in or donate online uh, gift cards that went to families. And what was really nice was every family um, that received one from Weston Social Services is not only one of our neighbors because they live in Weston, but they received everything they needed for a fully prepared holiday meal. And in addition, they received a gift card that they could use to buy, you know, presents. And it kind of covered everything from the meal to special things you know, to give as gifts to each other. So we were really proud to participate in that and have it um, come off as really successful. In terms of community building, this was a really fun event. We did a charcuterie workshop. It was at the field club. And on the left was, is a picture of my finished charcuterie board, which I hope to use those skills going forward. It was really well attended and we learned how to make like flowers out of salami and, and uh, kiwis and strawberries and how to do very fancy things with brie and jam and cheese. That's supposed to be a snowman in the middle of my charcuterie board. Um, but it was really great to have a bunch of parents come out before the holidays and just another opportunity where we got to know one another. And that's really been a big theme for us this year. And um, this was a fun one. So our next parent night out, again, another community opportunity is gonna be a woodworking and wine night. So this is gonna be at AR Fairfield and you get to go and you pick your project. So the cost of it will depend on what you pick. So you could do something that's like $20 or something that's you know way more pricey. Um, and you get to do anything from making like one of those signs that can go over your fireplace. I see one behind Maria. Um, you can do something like make a sled for your front door, which is a project I want to do. You can make a serving tray. Like the opportunities to pick your project are endless. And I'm hoping that we get a really big turnout as another opportunity to just hang out and make something fun. That can be a really nice Valentine's gift for your family. Coming up, in case you haven't heard, is a very exciting event, and I am going to actually have the chairperson who has been working incredibly hard to make this come to life just say uh, two quick words about our b-ball. Ellen? 
Thanks so much, Stephanie, and thanks everybody. Well, we are super excited for the inaugural B-Ball that's gonna be happening on March 4th at the historic Norwalk Art Space. And it is going to be another continuation of our PTO's goal this year, which is to create amazing opportunities for parents to come together, to have fun and to get to know each other because we know, especially listening to Officer Kim, um, that as kids get older, it gets harder and harder to make connections. So we really feel that it's so important at this time to bond as an elementary community and to be there for each other as our kids go through the Weston schools. Um, it's gonna be an amazing night. We have a special music announcement that'll be coming, I hope this week. Uh, we have amazing food by the premier caterer of uh, really Connecticut, which is Marcia Selden Catering. Uh, there is going to be just a really wonderful vibe and a really a great opportunity to get dressed up, come together and celebrate as a Hurlbut community. So Maria, if you could go to the next slide. You can see there's a picture of the Norwalk Art Space. If you haven't been there, it is a nonprofit art space that uh, actually gives money back to Norwalk High School students and also celebrates artists in Fairfield County and provides mentorships and funding for them to create their art. So there'll be an art exhibit that will be in place. We're gonna have live music, more coming soon, and amazing food, but most of all, community. And tickets, we are selling fast. We are overwhelmed at the positive response that we've gotten. So if you're considering coming, if you're a Hurlbut parent, please buy your tickets now. We fully expect that we will be sold out within the next week. So come to the B-Ball. Can't wait to see you there. And thanks everybody. Thank you, Ellen. Um, moving right along. So that will be March 4th, April 1st, um, April Fool's Day. This was no coincidence. The circus will be here. It's going to be amazing. And it's going to include a 40 minute like full circus show. And then there will be over a half hour for the kids to try tons of different interactive elements. So they are going to be able to try like juggling and tightrope walking and stilt walking. And it's going to be amazing. We're going to have two show times just so the crowds are not overwhelmed and everybody will have a chance to have a front row seat and participate in all the interactive elements. You will be seeing more information about uh, tickets coming soon, but we just want everybody to save the date. April 1st it is not going to rain and it's going to be an amazing uh, circus experience. And this is for Hurlbut families. So anybody who has a student in Hurlbut, but siblings in WISP, um, or even other schools, everybody um, in the family is invited to attend. And here's just a quick picture of just some of the excitement that the circus will have in store. So there on the bottom left is kind of like the circus tent. And then on the right are some of the interactive elements that the kids are going to get to experience. So we are really excited uh, to make this plan come to life. And finally, you will be hearing a lot more about the Memorial Day Fair, which is coming Memorial Day weekend. But on behalf of Hurlbut and WIS, we want to let everybody know that we would love for you to get involved. There are many opportunities, which are very small time commitments, larger time commitments, things that can be done completely remotely. But it really takes a village to make this um, fair be as successful as it is. And it is fun to plan. It is fun to get involved. We couldn't even get people out of the ticket booth last year because everybody wanted to just keep hanging out in it because it is so fun to volunteer for this event. So if you're interested in doing anything and getting involved, please uh, let Maria or I know or our uh, fearless chair people, Debbie Malconian, also um, Lorraine Kehu from Hurlbot and uh, Sherry Day from WIS, and we will find something for you to do that fits your schedule and availability. And that is it. Thank you from Hurlbot. Awesome. Thank you, Stephanie, very much. Um, yes, Debbie Mokoni said, please join us. It's great. It is great fun. Um, so um, what is going on at WIS? Um, first, some housekeeping. We have a new general board position. This is um, being added to all four schools, so this will also be added to Hurlbut. It is the SPED liaison position. Um, the special education liaison uh, serves to help facilitate communication and understanding between special education families and the larger PTO membership. 
The role is to bring awareness to and support our school community by helping to identify opportunities for inclusion in school-related matters, facilitate support for families with special needs, at PTO sponsored and school-related events. Um, the liaison will help identify issues at the district level. The PTO feels need to be addressed and help coordinate meetings, opportunities, and events. Uh, we feel that this is a very important position to add to all of our boards, and we're really excited um, to have this for next year. Um, and speaking of next year, if you can believe it, we are starting nominations for the 23-24 school year. Um, I didn't add the email in, but we have um, two people on the nominations committee right now, Stacey Dunbar and Jen Rubin. Uh, so look out for that email. We're looking for anyone who's going from second grade coming into third, and then obviously the fourth grade families moving up um, to fifth. The Pride store is open. So if you're still looking for um, swag, you can just pop over there at wispto.myshopify.com, get your t-shirts, blankets, um, and hats. We have some new artwork at the front of the school right now. It is blast off into 2023. Lauren Kill is our art and design chair and she had Michelle Woods help her create this very cool rocket ship. It's massive. It's like uh, six feet long. Um, and the kids have really been enjoying the change of decor. It really adds some brightness to the walls. And there'll be some more going up for um, February and uh, specifically Valentine's Day. Uh, the food drive, we ended right at the holiday seat, at the beginning of the holidays. It was a massive success. Record amounts of food were donated to the Weston Food Pantry. So thank you to everyone who was able to do that. We have now moved on to our winter coat drive. There's a nice bucket in front of Mr. Stu's desk that you can bring a um, winter coat in and uh, any size, any you know, quality, really nothing that's too worn um, and you leave it right there. Um, we have already, I think a bin full. So it's really wonderful. It's getting, finally getting cold here. So that is very helpful. Um, a few other things. I wanted to say really quickly how Exciting it is that everyone is excited for all of the events that are happening. We have had record amounts of turnout. We have so much excitement around everyone being together and actually getting to do things again that um, much like the b-ball is selling out, so are we at WES and we love it. And we are trying so hard to get everyone included because we know that um, that is the most important. So yes, the ice skating is at a capacity limit and that is based on Longshore. Um, they'll be selling some whisk swag at the event, some blankets and hats, because it'll be chilly. So if you need to buy something when you're there, you can. Families can show up at five o'clock at Longshore. We'll be sending out an email for that to get settled, have refreshments and then get to skating. Um, the Sweetheart Dance, what blew our mind, blew our mind. So some background was this event was normally for third, fourth, and fifth grade. All three grades were included. This year, we decided to put it towards the um, upper grades, the fourth and fifth. And we had no idea how fast these tickets would sell. It was unreal, unreal to all of us. And it was so great. And so we worked with the superintendent, with facilities, with Mrs. Falber to open up more tickets so that almost all the kids who wanted to go were able to go. There's a wait list now. Please email me if you um, are still interested in going. And we're going to work really hard to make sure that we can get all the families in that want to go. The night is, we've planned, there are five people on this committee, five, and they're planning a massive event. And it's really exciting and we're looking forward to it. With that, we will need volunteers. So any family that's at the event, a parent who's there can volunteer to work a shift for the popcorn machine or the cotton candy. So please watch for that sign up. We will definitely be needing um, help. The yearbook, everyone's been wondering and asking, we have the yearbook contract signed. Um, purchasing and uploading pictures will start next week. And that will include fifth grade baby pictures. So we always do baby pictures for the fifth graders in the yearbook and that will also start then. And okay, that's all for me. I am always available to chat with. If anyone has a question, if a parent needs to reach out, you can find my email, my phone number pretty much anywhere. Um, I want to meet, and Debbie's as well. Debbie's is right there with me. I just wanna address one really quick thing before we get to the Board of Ed. 
When it comes to Facebook, that is our communication device. So we will put flyers up, reminders up, et cetera. Um, but as a PTO, we will no longer be responding to messages on Facebook. If anyone has a question about an event, if they need to talk with us, we are literally available in almost any way. Text, you can, my house is here. I'm happy to chat with anyone about what they need. Um, but as a PTO group, we've decided that the best way to really facilitate um, uh, the best communication with everyone who has a question is to really just reach out, reach out to us personally, pick up the phone, send us an email. We are here. Like Stephanie's here. I am here. Debbie's here. So going forward, that's just what we want to make sure everybody knows. All right. Um, so Board of Ed, we are ready. Hi. Um, this is the first, we're going to start with the December notes. So some new business that came up from the December Board of Ed meeting was there was a retirement um, from the WIS school counselor, Vicki DeLuca, and there's also a resignation, Karen Olson, who is the assistant to Tracy Edwards, who's the head of pupil services. Tracy also named that there are some open positions in terms of special education and pupil services, and that they are actively searching to fill those positions. Another thing that was mentioned was the Early Learning Center lottery. It began in, in November and it closed this week on January 20th and the lottery will begin on January 25th. Um, the next thing that was discussed at the Board of Ed on the next slide is the separation of church and state policy. So right now there is a list of holidays, religious holidays, that is on the, um, the district's website and any religious holiday will not be counted. If your child misses a day of school, it will not be counted against them. And then the next policy update that was discussed was visitor and observation policy. And this has been updated and is at the discretion of principals. And now we're moving on to the January Board of Ed meeting. Hi, thanks. Uh, so a few things. Um, Weston has accepted a bid to evaluate the asphalt of all the parking lots and school roads, which means there's paving ahead, which is good news for us. The superintendent reported that we're working with an organization called Full Court Peace. Um, the Weston Basket Basketball Association will work towards refurbishing the admin basketball court. And it's actually a community service project for the high schoolers. They're joining with Danbury Public Schools as well to do one for them. Um, so you'll see fundraising efforts uh, community wide for that event. Um, the Wizards basketball fundraiser was a huge success. So we'll look to do another one next year. Next slide. And now we're on to budget. So um, in case you hadn't heard, the board approved the operating budget of 58, a little over 58 million, which is an increase from last year. If you are interested in seeing how the budget comes together, um, how it affects your child, what the numbers mean and how they're all broken down, on the main page of the Weston Public School website is an icon, the link is called budget. You click on that and you can see many, many comp comprehensive supplemental documents that will tell you anything you ever wanted to know about the budget. Um, leading up to the budget meetings, there's a series of public forums, um, all of which provide opportunity for public comment. And while there was many, many great things discussed, I'm just highlighting one particular thing, which is a hot topic right now, which is the mental health of our kids. And one of the community members inferred that perhaps we as a district are not doing enough to support the mental health of our kids. And she was asking for proactive, visible and actionable steps um, to identify not only the kids that are currently um, getting social services or special education services, but the ones that are riding under the radar that are struggling. So just as a reinforcement, um, the superintendent and um, Tracy Edwards reiterated that we as a district are committed to um, making sure that resources are available, that we're communicating where these resources are, where these kids can get help um, to make sure because our kids do spend an enormous amount of time in school. Um, so go ahead, next slide, Maria. And then following up on that, the following budget forum um, reiterated this topic. And one of the board members brought up the fact that 
it, are we doing enough that we're su pro providing support after a child is struggling, whereas perhaps we should identify the children and make sure that we're doing something before they break down. And he made a good comment about possibly offering some sort of curricular based support, um, whether it's a class around social media, internet, and as you just heard Officer Kim, which I find terrifying, um, even for our Hess and Wiss kids that are playing things like Roblox, they're addictive. They manipulate your mind in a way that once you step away from it, um, your mindset and your emotions change because then you feel isolated. And these are all things that actually can affect even an eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 year old. So perhaps we could do something more um, before the kids get to their breaking point. And Tracy Edwards also spoke about this additional position in PPS that will not only support her staff um, in special ed, but offers a better opportunity to spread throughout the school and um, offer support to all of our district mental health providers like your school social workers, your therapists, your counselors, and the entire student body, not just the special ed folks. And lastly, I just wanted to draw attention to one document that the superintendent just recently posted that answers the age old question, why if enrollment is going down, is the budget going up? And um, she proposes that we understand it's not just a numbers game. And I think the document really supports the answers to these questions about class size and um, projections and things. So it's all on the website under that budget document. Um, the next BOE meeting is February 13th at six o'clock and that's a remote. Thank you, Stacey. And these Board of Ed reports are always in the um, whistle and the buzz. So if anyone wants to go back and look at those, click on those links, you can find them all there. Um, the whistle's now going out on Thursdays um, and the buzz goes out on Fridays. Next up, oh, um, who is going to speak for Edith? I can't remember who's taking this for her. That's me, Maria. Thank you, Alexandra. Yeah, no problem. Do you mind clicking on it for me? Yeah. Thank you. Can you see it? I uh, got it now, yeah, thank you. Um, these are just the, the minutes um, that Edith took notes from last meeting, which was, oh my gosh, in November. It seems like a long time ago. <laughs> um, so if I could just have a first. We're going through. I'll first, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. A second. I'll second, um, Alexandra. This is Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. All right, thank you. Thanks. Let me go back to my slide now. One second. She is. All right. And next up, uh, Shannon with the West Minutes. Yes. Hi. Oh, no. Are you not? Is that not opening? It's not opening. That's all right. Oh, shoot. Okay. Um, well, just a quick rundown. We had um, at our last, yes, it seems like so long ago, back in November, um, the guest speakers were the day camp representatives. Um, we had uh, five speakers for from local uh, camps here. Um, and then we were all just um, gearing up for the year. My goodness, um, the gratitude tree, we had the canned food drive going on, um, some big events with the bingo night and uh, wizards game. So um, I'd just like to uh, put a motion forward to pass those minutes. I'll first, Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. Debbie, second. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. And I'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. And philanthropy, Jenny. Yes, we have um, two requests for Harvard this month. Um, so the first one is for a 3D printer for the Makerspace. So um, this is from Mrs. Rodko on behalf of the WPS tech department. The idea is we do have some 3D printers, but they're very old. 
Um, and so this is a new one. We're trying to get back into using the 3D printers because obviously during COVID that didn't really happen. Um, and now they've come to look at them. They need a sort of an update of the tech. So we're just getting one to start with to see how it works and to see it integrated back into the curriculum. It's a cost of up to $400. I mean, the good thing is these printers have become a lot cheaper than they used to be. Um, a lot of research has been done about which one is the most appropriate and the Adventure Rough 3 printer was decided upon. Um, so yeah, it's quite exciting. The kids will be able to use this um, during their LRC lessons and also for all different sorts of curricular areas. So has anybody got any questions about that one? I don't if, see anything in the chat. If not, then can I have somebody to first, please? I'll first, Jenny, Alexandra. Thank you. And then we need a second to. Um, I'll second, Jenny. It's Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that was our first request. Our second request is um, for an additional A-frame. You'll have seen these outside the school. So Mr. Fisher and Mrs. Eagle use them to sort of display. At the moment, I think it tells everybody about the early dismissal tomorrow. They want an extra one because they can put it in a different place as well because not all the parents come through the loop. So the idea is they'll put it somewhere else and so there'll be two displays and parents can see the important messages from the school. This one is again up to $400. Um, that includes sort of the letters that you have to put in and the shipping and all of that. So it seems like quite a straightforward request. Has anyone got any questions about that one? And if not, can somebody be the first? I'll first, this is Kelly. Thank you. And can somebody be the second? I'll, I'll second, second. this is Laura. Laura. Thank you, Laura. And that's it for Philanthropy for Harvard this month. Thank you, Jenny and Francesca. Yes, good morning, everyone. We have a, a request from the wonderful Miss Sh uh, Shelley Reiners. Uh, she has requested uh, um, to cover for the expenses uh, to have uh, Susanna Daraj. Uh, she's an author and uh, she's known for her series of uh, the Farah books, uh, Farah Rocks. Uh, for those who are not familiar, um, those are books that are um, written for uh, second to fifth uh, uh, graders. Uh, and uh, it's all about the stories of uh, uh, Farah and how she uh, faces and navigates through life challenges at school, school dramas, best friends, uh, issues, uh, etc. cetera. And um, uh, she has requested uh, um, up to $2,000 uh, uh, to cover for uh, uh, the author honorarium, travel expenses, lunch, and uh, book copies. So each class uh, will receive uh, at least two copies. So there will be additional copies uh, in the library and uh, a few more to give out as uh, prices for the kids to get them ready in preparation of uh, the author visit. Any questions? No, so if I can get a first. first Maria. Thank you Maria and a second. Second from Chris. Thank you Chris and that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you Francesca. Uh, next up Michelle with the treasury report for Hurlbut. All right hi everyone. Um, so as of uh, January 24th our operating cash balance is at $33,717.62. And our philanthropy cash budget is at $78,647.64. Um, for the operating account, um, we have an influx of b-ball ticket sales coming in. Um, but to note, this is going to be categorized under the philanthropy account. Um, just the Stripe account has it coming into our operating account first, and then I'll transfer it over to philanthropy. Um, in terms of expenses, we had the holiday charcuterie, which was very successful. Um, that was a $1,050 expense. Um, there was a reimbursement for the hangover of book fair and um, a social services check was made out for the holiday giving drive at $1,800. Um, philanthropy had no income this, um, the, this past month. Um, our expenses were the annual donation to Western Educational Foundation and um, the Norwalk Art Space for the B-Ball for the deposit. And that's me. Thanks, Michelle. 
Uh, Chris, for the WIS philanthropy budget. Or just the treasury report, sorry. Cool, yeah. Okay, that's a little messed up, slide is a little messed up, but no, no problem. Um, basically, where we are for the year, we've we've collected all of our operating income, which is primarily PTO dues. So we've collected all the revenue there that we will for the year. Um, but we 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 have still a lot of uh, fundraising to do, both direct and third party. And I want to just take just just a minute um, for those of you who aren't aware. Um, our direct fundraising programs, you guys see a lot. They're like the, the WIS Apparel, uh, Family Photo Day, the Memorial Day Fair, which is upcoming, um, School Photo Day, and the Yearbook. Uh, but then we have a number of third party fundraising programs that, that everybody might not be aware of. So I just want to point out a couple. You guys get the flyers, I'm sure, for Square One Art. They, um, they return a portion of that back to, to WIS. Uh, we have the Book Fair. Um, we also have a program that I just want to make sure everybody's aware of, which is the Amazon Smile program. So there was there a, um, a flyer went out in the whistle this last week, and it'll go out in, in future ones. But just so everybody knows, if you use Smile through Amazon, they, they kick back a half a percent of total purchases. So in the past, that's been a very significant part of our fundraising budget. So if everybody could just on their mobile phone select um, WIS as their as their um, for, for their for the donation, um, there's instructions again in the WIS, and if you have any questions, you can email me directly. Um, but that would be a big a big help. Just in terms of expenses, you can see we're a good portion of the way through through our budget um, for for the year. Uh, we haven't spent anything on the capital side yet, though. That's coming through philanthropy. Um, you can see our account balances are pretty healthy. Philanthropy is at eighty. 3,000 operating at 29, and the district membership account, which WIS is um, managing this year, that's basically the PTO dues. So that'll be zeroed out in the coming months. Uh, and that's it. So, can, I, yeah. can I just mention one thing? Uh, I, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but Amazon is actually shutting down the Amazon Smile program. Uh, Oh, I did not know that. No. Yeah. So it will shut down by the end of February. February 20th, it looks like. They're shutting yeah. down now. So I don't know how it works if we have any like pen outstanding balance with them, but this is something that maybe we should look into before before the end of February. Yeah, I I, I have uh I can see how much has been spent to date. So I'm sure they'll pay that. Now, what a bummer. I finally uh, announced it <laughs> and it's ending. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, it, it came out um, a few days ago. It, it's something that was just... Uh, uh, it was just announced last week. Just announced. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so if anybody has ideas for other <laughs> related uh, fundraising activities, uh, we, could, we could certainly use it. Thank you, Chris, very much. And that's it. This was a, a big meeting. And thank you to everyone that was able to attend. It's recorded. So it will go on YouTube at Hurlbutt and Wes um, by tonight. Next meeting is February 15th. And that is our superintendent speaking about the budget. So I'm hoping that we get lots of people um, listening to that. It's a great teachable um, meeting. We can learn a lot. Uh, anyway, we are all here if um, people have questions for us, if they need to reach out. Um, Mrs. Falber, Mrs. Cadis are always available, as are your presidents and the rest of your executive board. So thank you everyone for attending and we appreciate it and have a great rest of the week. Thank you.